Hi, Abby's Hey family. Welcome to Midweek Devotion. So last week I talked a little bit about putting on the full armor of God and equipping ourselves every day. And one of the things that I've just been meditating about is in Ephesians 6 where it says, get your feet shod with the preparation of peace. And to me, that's putting on shoes of peace, which is a vital necessity every day. Every time you leave your house or you get your kids ready to leave the house, you say, where's your shoes? And then when you have kids, it's are you wearing the appropriate shoes? You can't wear flip-flops when it's raining outside, right? So shoes are a vital necessity. And I like how the Bible put peace with shoes. It, it put them together. So I want to look really quickly at one of the last things Jesus said to his disciples before he left the earth. Because how many of you guys know that it's so important to hang on to something that someone says just before they leave you, right? It's a critical... Uh, moment and it's something to be remembered. So in John 14 27, Jesus said in the Amplified Classic, peace I leave with you, my own peace I now give and bequeath to you, which means leave. Not as the world gives do I give. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, or unsettled. In this verse, Jesus is saying, here is my part, and now here is your part when it comes to attaining peace. Jesus's part is, I leave you peace. He left his peace. When we're born again, the Prince of Peace resides inside of us and lives in us. So then God said, your part is, do not let. Do not let. That's our part. Our part is do not let our hearts be troubled, which means our part is a choice. Just like putting on shoes is a choice. Putting on the shoes of peace is a choice. We have the choice to not let or allow the outside issues and storms affect our inside. I love how Joyce Meyer puts it. She said that stress is a sign of what's going on inside of us rather than what's going on around us. Stress isn't an outside force. Yes, there are storms and there are seasons and there's issues, there's lack of money, there's illnesses, there's family, but those are outside issues. But stress, when when you become stressed out, that's an inside issue. Now, don't get me wrong. The outside issues, when they hit, the feelings come. That's natural and that's normal. Um, I've had my fair share of hits over the last couple of weeks. And that feeling, you can almost feel it consume you, right? You just feel the pressure, you feel the anxiety and the fear and your heart races and your mind starts going a million miles a minute. Those feelings are real, they're there. So I'm not saying that they don't exist. Those feelings are there, but thank God he left us his peace and we don't go by how we feel, but we go by what God says. That is when we have to do our part. When all the feelings come on and the stress and the anxiety and the fear, that's our turn now to do our part and to choose to put on those shoes of peace. That is when you gear up. So that's when you get to couple with uh, John 14, 27, do not let your hearts be troubled with Ephesians 6, put on those shoes of peace. Get your feet shot with the preparation of peace. Um, an example that I can give you is my own. When, when storms have hit over these past couple of weeks, you have to take a moment. Sometimes I take a moment out of frustration and it's a moment where you either cry for a moment or you have this conversation with God of like, are you serious right now? Like, really? Right? You, you can have those moments. Feelings are real, right? Jesus cried in the Bible. Jesus had his own moments where he let the feelings just... He dealt with them, but he didn't keep those feelings with him on his journey. That's where you get to make the choice of, let's put on those shoes of peace. Let's gear up. Let's move forward because I'm going to do my part and I am not going to let my heart be troubled because God already did his part and gave me the peace. And now it's my turn to activate that peace, right? Um, <coughs> it's... It's stopping in my tracks and making declarations over my life. It's remembering. It's putting up that shield of faith. In Ephesians 6, it says, lift up the shield of faith. When I've had some hits over the last week, I've literally said, God, I'm lifting up my shield of faith. And I start declaring what I know is truth, which is what God says is truth. 
It's laughing at the devil. It's changing the atmosphere of your home in that moment, whether you're in the car, you're in bed, you're going to the restroom. When that fear and anxiety and pressure hits, it's taking that moment and saying, nope, I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna make the choice, right? It's changing that atmosphere. A great example of all of this is children. When they get injured or they start a fight, I'm talking more about younger children, uh, what does a parent try and do? A parent tries to distract. It tries to take their mind off of their problem, right? So if they fall down, they get hurt. Suddenly you hear a parent go, oh, look, 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 look at the doggy. Isn't he so cute? And suddenly the kid's like, oh, yeah. And they become happy because now they're at peace and they're no longer focused on or worried about the problem. They've turned their attention to something else. When we put on the shoes of peace, we are literally distracting our mind. We are telling our mind, no, 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 no. Don't focus on that. Look over here look over here, right? It's the same type of thing. Um, the same is true when we go to put on our shoes of peace. When we say, when we stop and say no, God says to think on those things that are pure, lovely, just of a good report. We are drawing our thoughts, just like you do with the kids. You're drawing their attention. We're drawing our thoughts, our attentions elsewhere. Worship, music, Prayer, those are things that draw us back into his peace. Despite the storm that is present, despite the news that you just heard, despite how your body's feeling, we're gonna draw our attention off of that by putting on praise music, worship music, getting with God in prayer, lifting up our shield, making those declarations, right? Um, I love how one preacher said they put up visuals throughout their house, notes and stickies. And they said, sometimes you need to visually see where your focus needs to be. And I love that. Sometimes depending on the storm and how big of this outside force is, sometimes you need to put stuff up everywhere so that you can visually see where your focus needs to be. And I love that. Um, you have to have that vision so that every time you turn around a corner and see it, your focus is in peace and not in the feelings that are coming, the feelings that are real, but you're distracting your mind. You're turning your attention, drawing yourself back into the peace of God. That is why the Bible says in Philippians 4, 7, God gives you perfect peace that transcends all understanding. That means that it's, it's crazy that I can have peace and joy in the middle of what is happening. That's that peace that transcends all understanding. It's crazy to be able to be walking through an intense storm, but genuinely have rest and joy despite it. That is the God kind of peace. I love what Keith Moore has said before. He said, most people who are worried and stressed and anxious and fearful, they're stressed over things that haven't even happened yet. And I know for me, sometimes I've had moments where I'm lying in bed and I'm just like, I can feel my heart racing and I'm starting to freak out. And then I remember that and I think, I'm freaked out about not having enough when right now I have enough. So instead of thinking about what could be, I'm gonna focus on what God says is and what my future is according to God, right? So in Matthew 6.34, it says, do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow. That's all a part of that peace. It's keeping your mind focused on what it needs to be focused on. For tomorrow, we'll have worries and anxieties of its own. So don't do it. Um, I've had nights where, like I said, I've noticed that and I've had to stop and say, I'm being fearful and having this stress take over my inside when I'm thinking about something that hasn't even happened yet. I'm thinking about a potential. So I've had to draw my attention back and draw myself back into that peace and put back on those shoes of peace. Um, and that's also part of getting up that shield of faith because sometimes when that's happening, I realize, oh, I've lowered my shield, right? So you have to lift your shield of faith. And suddenly now I'm making sure that these outside forces are not affecting my inside. I want to keep my inside in perfect peace. So you have to pause and draw your attention away from the storm and back to the truth. So draw your focus back into his peace and get those shoes back on and that shield back up. Just think of that as with a child, when you, when you have to draw their attention to something else, distract them so that they stop crying. It's the same thing, only you're distracting yourself with truth. You're distracting yourself with what is truly truth. <laughs> you are focusing on what is truth and not on what our body sees and our mind sees and our body feels. So this week, don't forget to put on your shoes of peace. And when the feels come, stop.
stop and draw your attention to the truth, to the peace. He already did his part and left that piece for us. Now it's your turn to do your part and take it this week. Have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving.